Hello, I'm James Ingram for AutoControls.org. In this video, we'll be automatically controlling six Bachmann N-Gage DCC streetcars on one main line using no blocks and just two Z-stuff detectors using the NCE DCC mini panel to do the automatic controlling. Thanks for watching. Just by way of review, in the uh, previous video, 830, we ran five of these streetcars on a small loop of track. Now, what we've done since this previous video is we've added some hardware in the form of more toggle switches on the control panel, and that allows us to use an improved program. We can run six cars with a, a simpler program and run any combination of those six cars. This demonstration is fast forwarded 500%. Uh, the real time video was over 20 minutes long, so we speeded it up as an overview. overview. Uh, we'll show the real time video clips at the end of this movie. What we're using here is an NCE power cab for power and an NCE mini panel for control. We've got six Bachmann N gauge DCC Peter Witt streetcars running on Kato Una tracks. And what we've got is a simple system here requiring no blocks in the track, just two detectors. Let's talk about the logic for a minute. Uh, we run one car at a time and we park at a specified distance downstream of the detector. And we're using time delay from the moment the lo locos pass the detector, I should say streetcars. We can't specify distance, but we can specify time uh, past the detector, and, and the distance is pretty consistent uh, because the cars run a fairly consistent speed. Once in a while you'll see the cars bump, but it's at a real slow speed, so they don't derail or anything. Our speed we're using is speed step 18 on the main line and speed step 12 in the yard. Now we've got to use two detectors, so one detector is going to be clear for the incoming cars. Let's Now let's talk about the detectors in more detail. Uh, note these detectors change from green to red when the cro car cross crosses in front of them. These are Z-stuff detectors, and the relay momentarily closes which when it turns to red, which signals the mini panel, which is controlling the cars. These are Z-Stuff DZ-1012 infrared block signal detectors, and they're low enough in height that they can detect an N-gauge trolley. And there's a Z-Stuff DZ-1008 single pole uh, single throw relay, which is normally opened, opened here when it's green. And, it, and the relay closes when the... Uh, block signal changes to red and that's what signals the mini panel that the car crossed in front of the detector. The DZ-1012 is actually made for O-gauge but it works for N-gauge if you uh, put the detector low enough like we've done here. Z-Stuff also makes HO and N-gauge versions which are more in scale but you need a hole in the platform to do that so I'm using the uh, O-gauge detectors. Note you could use a magnet on the bottom of the cars and reed switches for larger scales, but it'd probably be difficult to get a magnet on the bottom of these N-gauge cars. They're pretty tiny. Now there's toggle switches on the end, on the, the right end of the control board, which is down there on the far end up against the wall. Toggle switches one through six. They allow us to run any combination of six cars. All, all six cars, any five, any four, any three, down to one car. And uh, those toggle switches control which cars are run. Then, and when the toggle switch is up, that, that sends the commands to run a particular car. When the switch, toggle switch is down, that it's, it's open and then the commands to run a particular car are not sent. Now these have stopped at the the tog I opened the toggle switch and they stopped. 
Here we are looking at the uh, rear end of these cars when they come in. We're using the speed reverse zero command, and you can see when they stop, it causes a tail light to come on because we're using speed reverse zero instead of speed forward zero. Uh, the fifth car doesn't, the light doesn't work on the fifth car apparently, but, but you'll see the other five will have their tail lights on, and the front light still stays on. So we can, if we're watching this layout, we can tell the cars have power when they're stopped by looking at either the front or the uh, rear and seeing the headlights and tail lights being on. And we'll move around here in a second to the uh, front of the cars while they're sitting there. You can see the headlights are still on at the same time. What we're going to do here is remove the three red cars. In a second, you'll see me picking them up and putting them up on the shelf by that large-scale street car. We'll just run the uh, remaining yellow cars, two, four, and six. And as I might have mentioned earlier, we can use those six toggle switches on the control board to select any combination of cars. In this case, we've opened uh, switches one, three, and five, which causes those uh, red cars not to, the command causes the commands not to be sent since they're not on the track and we're just running the uh, yellow cars and, uh, and it, again we can run any combination of uh, the, uh, any of the six cars using those toggle switches if, if the switch is open the routine just skips sending the commands for the cars that aren't on the track now what I call the repeat switch is open, so those cars will stop and wait until the uh, start push button 3 is pushed again to start them up again. But this now in this clip, notice we've removed the rear detector. We only have the single detector in front. We've got just three cars on the track. We're using a different program from an earlier, earlier video number 827. And what this uh, different program with one detector does, it keeps two cars moving all the time. You can see it's, it's at behaving slightly different. There's two of them moving out there at the same time on the main line. Uh, this earlier program is limited to, uh, really to practically to three cars maximum. And it's a little more, just a little more complicated to write it, and it's not as flexible. But it, it does allow you to do a different effect. You have to, you have to, and you have to use the same three cars. We can't select combinations of cars like we could do with the uh, earlier program. That, and I trimmed this program down from video 827 just to make it as simple as possible. And notice we're keeping the uh, one car is out on the main line running speed 20 and the other one is running slower until the, the first one on the main line crosses in front of the detector. And, and there's actually a way we showed in video 819, an earlier video, to keep all three uh, trains moving at one time. But th this is just to give you an idea, idea there's different ways to do this. Now we're up looking uh, closer at the control panel. And this little device here is what we call the mini panel, which is essentially our programmable model con model train controller for DCC locomotives. Uh, we have a little routine we can test the detectors, uh, which I'll demonstrate now. When I push this reset button, you can see it makes that LED blink, and that also blinks whenever the controller, the mini panel, sends a command, and we can do that by running a little routine to test these detectors, and that's activated by button one. So I'm gonna push button one, which should start that routine. Now, if I hold my hand in front of this detector, you can see it went from green to red. This is the same thing that happens when a train goes in front of this thing. And you can see as long as that's red, the uh, LED is flashing. And it went back to green, which opened the relay and stopped flashing. And the same thing, this detector is wired in parallel. So if I cause this detector over here to go to red, it causes the LED to flash. And there's also, that routine takes up eight, uh, eight steps, about eight commands. But the push button three we use to start our six cars. So I hold this down while the test routine is running. The, uh, the uh, controller detects that. And likewise, this repeat switch 
if I close that, it detects that. So the, the, the switches usually aren't something you need to test that much, and the push button you don't need to test. But the when you hook these detectors up, you do want to verify that they work okay, and that's what this routine allows you to verify. Taking another look at this control panel, as we said, as we said, this is the mini panel. That's what they call this device, the mini panel, which is the train controller. Uh, we have push buttons. This is the push button for test, push button to start, push button three, which starts the uh, six cars running. This is our reset button. We have to use this to break it out of the test routine, that is to say to stop the test routine, or if we're in the middle of running the six cars and say something derails or something and happens and we need to stop the routine, we can push the reset button and that'll stop this thing from uh, executing it. And uh, as far as our switches go, we've got these six switches here. You can see since the last video, these four that are in blue are the ones that I added for this video. So there's now a total of six along the side, numbered one, two, three, four, five, six. And we use these to control which of the six cars are going to run. Uh, the switches, as they are shown now, they're all down, which is open. As to say, it's like they're not even connected, so they won't. The, the, the routine won't try to run the cars if these switches are down. That is to say, open. But if we uh, close one of these switches, like there's switch 1 and switch 2, it'll try to run cars 1 and 2. It'll try to execute the commands for those cars. So we, if we want to add car 5, we pull that switch up. So these switches allow us to run any combination of the cars. And this is the re repeat switch here. And it just, uh, when it finishes running whatever combination of cars you've selected at the end of the routine it looks to see if this switch is open or closed down is down is open and up is closed if it's uh closed it'll repeat the routine if it's uh down open it'll stop at the end of the routine stop executing and everything will stop and it'll wait till somebody pushes the the uh, start button again and this is what they call the power control panel. This is part of the power cap. Remember, this uh, system's being run by this thing, which is called an NCE power cap. It puts out about 1.8 volts at around 13.8 amps. Uh, excuse me. Puts out about 1.8 amps at about 13.8 volts. And down here is our z stuff detectors, which we talked about before this is the actual detector of Z stuff DZ1012 and these are the newer ones they've got the orange wire they're they have an adjustable light sensitivity they work better than the uh, original ones the original ones you had problem problems sometimes with them being tripped by overhead uh, lights when you didn't want them tripped and this back here is the relay it's a Z stuff DZ uh, 1008 single pole single throw relay and this just this is just connected up to the inputs of the mini panel as far as and one more switch this switch here allows us to turn off the power to the detectors uh, and the only time you use this if you're programming with the with the uh, power cab and you're, you'll if you use these you're probably familiar with it uh, it, it uses the same track as you're running trains on it as for programming when you switch it to programming mode so I can we can use this switch to turn off the detector so there's no current draw from the uh, there's no current draw on the power cab other than the single train on the track that you're programming then when you're done programming programming and ready to run again you turn this switch back on and basically this terminal block is used for the uh, track power going out here and detector power going out here this terminal block is for connecting to the inputs these inputs have screw terminals but I find it easier to leave those connected and to use these bigger uh, connections on the terminal block for hooking up wires and then this terminal block is just to pick up the ground side the black wires on all these switches rather than trying to run all six of these wires over here which it's already crowded I run them down to here and then take one black wire 
over to the ground on the uh, mini panel. And uh, one more thing, I started using this RGB uh, wire, what they call this, this is for RGB lights, and it's a, uh, it seems to be fairly common, got this on Amazon, but uh, it, it, you can see maybe it's blue on the left end, red, green, and black, and I've been using the uh, blue and the red side for power, and then the uh, green and the black side for the uh, output of the relay, which feeds to the detector. So I use this, this color code consistently, try to use it consistently for all the hookups. The one thing you don't want to do is accidentally hook up power to these inputs of the mini panel. That can damage it. All, the only thing you ever want to hook up to the inputs of the mini panel is either a relay, uh, a switch, or a push button, or a wire. This is my wire. This is essentially push button two. I have this wire connected to input two over here on the mini panel. I can touch it to the ground to simulate a push button, but yeah, you don't want to hold, hook up any voltage sources to the input of this thing. Only, only push buttons or uh, switches. This has its own little voltage source, five volts, I think it is, and it can sense when you ground an input. That's how it actually communicates with the world uh, when an input is grounded. Uh, so you want to make sure you don't get any voltage connected to that. Here's looking at the uh, side of the Z-Stuff detector assembly, uh, the detector being here and the relay being over here. i uh, made a little diagram that shows the hookup, so I hopefully get things hooked up correctly. This is the uh, red and the blue on this end, which is the power, and then going in here is the, uh, the black is going to the common and the green is going to the normally open. So this relay is normally open until this detector is tripped. That is to say something passes in front of it and blocks the infrared beam. Then it closes this relay. And I've, I've made a wiring diagram to show how to hook this stuff up that's uh, consistent with the Z-Stuff instructions for hooking it up. Let's take a quick look at this layout itself. There's not much to it. Uh, it, as I mentioned earlier, Kato Unitrack, most of it's R248. I just crammed as much of it on the table as I could. Uh, kind of walking down the layout here, just nothing but track. There's two uh, power connectors, which we're coming to. Right here is the first hookup to the track and then uh, going over here there's our second hook up to the track and there's the the uh, power cab which is controlling this and that that connects via this wire it's snaking up through here to the uh, power control panel which, which is where it hooks in Far, my wiring is not the neatest I'm guessing anybody watching this video can probably do neater wiring than I can but it works but uh, just to repeat, the only two connections to the track are the uh, the one power connection over there and the second one over here. And there's no blocks, it's just one continuous track. That's a nice thing about the DCC automatic control. You don't have to mess up with, with a bunch of blocks in the track. And these z stuff detectors, they just sit next to the track. They don't actually physically connect to the track, so we can pick those up and move them around. And, Likewise, this one back here can be picked up and moved around. No connection, no physical connection to the track. The wiring diagram and other documentation for this uh, setup is on the website autocontrols.wordpress.com, which is part of the autocontrols.org uh, websites, and just look for video number. 831 on this uh, web page. A minute ago, we were looking at the uh, looking at the control panel in the video, and here's our power cab, which is providing power, and our mini panel here, which is doing the uh, control. 
Now let's look at the drawing for the same thing. Here's our drawing, uh, the mini panel being in the middle. And this drawing shows a uh, <clears throat> this drawing shows a powerhouse pro uh, instead of a power cab, but the same thing. It provides the power to the system. Our detectors are shown down here as an assembly, and there's a separate drawing for connecting these things together. Uh, this actually shows a DZ1011. You can use either a Z-Stuff DZ1011 or a Z-Stuff DZ1012 detector on, on these systems, except for N-Gage, the, the DZ1011 is a little bit too high to detect an N-Gage streetcar, but for HO and anything larger, you could probably use the DZ1011 signal. Uh, push buttons. We've got two shown on the drawing here. Push button three, which connects to input three. That starts the six-car routine. Uh, push button one, which connects to input one, starts the test routine for testing the detectors. And then there's a there's a routine connected to input two. And I have no, if you recall from the video, I have no push button two, but I had a wire connected to the input two. And I just touched that wire over here to the ground. And that that had the same effect as if there were a push button connected to uh, input two. Uh, switches, let's look at the switches. We've got uh, our repeat, what we call our repeat switch which is connected to input 18 over here. And that switch, uh, the, the, the program running checks whether at the end, checks whether that switch is open or closed. If that switch is closed, the program repeats itself. If that switch is open, then when the program ex finishes executing and it sees that switch is open, the program ends. So the uh, cars will be parked parked in their starting position and they'll be sitting there and waiting until somebody comes along and pushes this push button three again so this is set up for like on a public display you can have have this push button three located out at the front of the layout where the public can push it uh, and start the cars up uh, switches 19 through 24, which are shown here, th they control which cars the program will run. It's a very simple program. It just checks uh, which switches are closed uh, and, and sends commands to run those cars. Like if switch 19 is closed, it'll send commands to run car 1. And, and likely, if the, likewise, if these other switches are closed, it'll send the commands to run those cars. But say if you got the switch for... Uh, car two, which is twenty, open. Uh, it'll jump over. It'll jump over those commands and go to car three and check if that switch is open or closed. So you can using these switches, you can run any combination of the uh, six cars you want, anywhere from all six down to just any any single car. And then this switch over here, uh, called the switch one, this cuts the power to the detectors. And this is so with the power cab, if you use the uh, program, if you go into programming mode, programming track, it, it by opening this switch, it cuts off the power to the detector so that the uh, power cab can read the settings in the street cars. If I leave this switch closed, these, these detectors, they don't draw much power, but they're drawing enough power that the uh, power cab can't read the settings in the street cars. So that's the that's the purpose of this switch. You can always use programming on the main, even if you didn't have this switch. But programming on the main, you can't read the read the settings in the street cars. You're just, you're just kind of pushing them, pushing them in new settings in blindly. And these detectors, there there's a separate drawing for actually wiring the detectors up, and it's a slightly different wiring connection for the DZ1011 and the DZ1012. So I put those on on separate drawings and uh if it was ho scale cars or anything larger you could probably use a reed switch i say i say here detector infrared or reed switch or electric eye you could probably use a reed switch for ho and larger scale that is to say a reed switch under the track and a magnet on the bottom of the car but these n-gauge cars are so tiny i I'd, I'd, I'd be hard pressed to try to 
uh, hot glue a magnet on the bottom of these cars so it's easier to, for me to use the z-stuff detector you probably could use an electric electric eye which we've done in the past and i mentioned earlier the wire color i've been using this rgb uh lights color which seems to come in standard rolls of the uh red red and uh, red and blue and green and black and i've tried to consistently use red and blue for the power which you see over here power to the track and power to the detectors and then this green and black which is the output from the relay which goes over to uh input 14 which is where the detectors are hooked up to Yeah, sketch to hook up the uh, Z stuff DZ1012 block signal detector to the Z stuff DZ1008 uh, relay. Uh, there's actually a, a terminal block type sketch here and a schematic sketch here. And then here's a photograph of the unit as I've assembled it. And this is consistent with the Z stuff instructions here. This block here is actually what's on the, what comes with the Z stuff instructions there's words and not a diagram and i prefer the diagram and there is a minor uh, documentation error in the z stuff uh, relay notes which dennis zander of z stuff has confirmed and then we'll take a look at the 1011 this sketch shows the 1011 hook up to the relay and uh, over here z stuff does provide a sketch but it's not in color so i just made myself a, a color sketch to use but what's shown here is consistent with the z stuff instructions and again you have that that minor documentation area about the relay uh, wire colors a copy of the uh, command file is also located in the same documentation area that we talked about before page one of the command file this this contains basically some notes the uh, configuration of the mini panel and the command library examples try i tried to cover all this stuff in the video number 816 getting started so i won't bore you with all these details a second time and page two has the commands for push button one and push button two page three has the commands for the six car operation that's the main part of this video so we'll start here if you push push button three which is the one that starts the six cars it starts executing at input three step one and the first thing it does is check if that switch is closed to run car one if if it's if it's grounded that is to say if the switch is closed it skips over this statement here and selects loco one which is really streetcar one and then it turns the lights on starts it up at speed 18 call we're calling that the main line speed and it waits until it crosses in front of one of the two detectors and that's this wait until input 14 goes to ground when the detector goes from green to red it closes the relay and the mini panel senses that as a ground and then it reduces the speed to 12 which is we're calling yard yard speed it's kind of creeping along then we delay a quarter second times 42 in this case which gives us about a 10 and a half second delay to travel past the detector then we spend a send a speed reverse zero command which will stop it as we mentioned earlier speed forward zero or speed reverse zero would both do the job of stopping the car but if we send speed reverse zero that turns on the the tail light in this statement up going back here if this is open that means to see if switch input switch 19 is open meaning we don't want to run that car it, it won't skip this next statement it'll, it'll go to input five which is for car number two here's our cars here one two three four five and six is on the next page but each at each car it tests whether the appropriate switch is closed which is grounded if it's not it hits a link statement that jumps down to the next car. These skip statements are not 
immediately obvious if you're not familiar with this thing, but they, they basically give you a way to control whether you're going to execute some statements or whether you're going to skip around them. So at any rate, if it gets to car 2 and switch 20 is closed, then it executes the same commands for car uh, car 2. So all these commands are the same for each of these cars. And here's the commands for car 3, commands for car 4, and commands for car 5. And as we mentioned earlier, whichever switches are closed, it'll execute the statements that operate those cars. And the switches that are open... Uh, it'll jump. It'll jump over those. It'll jump over the commands for those cars. Let's go to page four. Here's page four in the last set of commands for car six. Now we have our test to repeat or quit at the end, which starts right here. If if an eight, input eighteen is what we're calling our repeat switch, if that's closed, we jump over this end statement. We delay a. a a quarter second, then it says link to input three. That's back to the top of the routine. So we start executing the routine again. And we need enough delay here to make sure that the after the last car, car number six, crosses a detector, that that detector has reset from red back to green, and thus the relay has opened. Because if that relay is still closed when it starts uh starting up car one it'll see that as a a closed uh, a block detector it, incorrectly and it'll stop that car in its tracks so it won't make the full circuit so if, the, if this switch 18 the repeat switch is closed it'll go to here and link back to input three at the top and start doing the routine again if this switch is open then it'll hit this terminate statement and it'll quit Now we'll review the commands for what we called uh, Demo 4, which we said was the uh, previous style program from a previous video, 827, where we could keep two cars moving all the time. And that was on input 2, where we had actually were using the wire to start the car because we didn't have a push button. But when we connected that wire to ground input 2, it started executing these commands here. It selected car two, which was the one upstream of the detector, the red car, turned on its light, started started it up at speed 18, and it says link to input 19, which is where the main part of the program is. That's on page five, and we'll go there. Here's page five. So we've got that car two running, and here's our initial conditions. Car two is upstream of the detector. Here's the detector. Cars 1 and 3 are downstream of the detector, initially sitting stationary when we first start things up. So we've got car 2 approaching the detector. Here it sends another turn the lights on command for when it's executing regularly. We wait until input 14 goes to ground. That's when the uh, car crosses in front of the detector. At that point, we slow down the yellow car to speed step 12, calling that yard speed. We select uh, car 1, which is the one sitting right here, start that up at uh, speed 12, which is also yard speed. Then car 3, the front one, we select uh, we select that one, start it up at speed step 20, which is mainline speed. Then we select car 2, that's the yellow one that was coming in, which is now on this side of the detector downstream and we delay a quarter second 50 a quarter second times 60 for 15 seconds to let it move forward in front of the detector away and then we send a stop command uh, speed reverse zero to that yellow car so at that point at that point these these cars are out on the main line this one's moving speed 20 this one's moving speed 12 this one's downstream of the detector part so it we go to the next step this actually is uh, there's actually three phases here of the sequence and then the same thing happens all over again these two this one's parked this one's running slow this one's on the main line at speed 20 approaching the detector so when that gets to the detector we do the do the same thing all over again when it, we cross the detector we slow this one down we start this one up at speed 12 start this one up at speed 20 
Then there were a 15-second time delay on this one to bring it past the detector and, and park it. And at that point, we start the, th the third part of the sequence, the third and last part. Now we've got C car number one is out on the main line. Uh, car number three is running slow. Car number, uh, excuse me, car three is stopped. Car number two is running slow at speed step 12. Now, whenever this one comes around the layout and crosses in front of the detector, the same thing happens. We start this one up at... Uh, uh, speed 12, we start this one up, we increase this one speed to 20, it's been run, creeping at speed 12. We execute a 15 second time delay after this has crossed the detector and stop it. Now we go to the next page where the rest of this is. So that, here's the end of the commands for the third car, and then we're back to that same uh, test to repeater quit, which is input 18. So when we're done running the the third car, we've got this test whether to repeat or quit part, uh, similar to before. And this was written just slightly differently than the previous one. I just noticed that. But this says skip if input to 18 is open. So if it's closed and we want to repeat, uh, it just drops to this statement. And it links to input 19, which takes it back up to the top and repeats the sequence. If this is open, it skips, if, input, if switch 18, the repeat switch is open, it skips over that link statement down to here to the shutdown procedure. Uh, and since uh, car 2 was already selected, it sends it a speed 0 command to stop it. Then it selects car 3, I think which is the one creeping slowly, spend, sends it a speed 0 command to stop it. So all the three of the cars are stopped, and then it terminates the, the sequence. Uh, and, and again, they'll sit there in the appropriate position until somebody pushes that push button 2. And again, this could be on a public display. You can put a push button 2 out at the front of the layout, and somebody from the public can come along and push that button to start them up again. So we'll talk about next. Next, we'll talk about the last thing, our our little test routine, and we'll go back to uh, go back to uh, page two where our buttons are, and push button one was our test routine. So if, if we push button one, it links to input twenty nine. So we'll we'll go to that step, and that is up here. Here's input twenty nine, and our this is our program C, our test buttons and detectors. So uh, the most important thing is to test is the detector, which is at hooked to input 14. So if input 14 uh, is closed, that's if the detector is blocked. It won't skip this next statement. It'll execute it, and that's, that says set uh, accessory 2000 normal. That would be a, a switch number 2000 if there was one that would set it to straight. Well, there's no switches on this, no turnouts on this layout, but the mini panel sends a command anyways, which causes the LED to blink. So that's how we get that LED to blink. We send a dummy command. Now, if, if the uh, start button is pushed, the same thing happens. It blinks the light. And if the repeat switch is closed, the same thing happens. It blinks the light. Now, if all those things are open, nothing's closed, then, then it... Uh, it skips the, the statements that make the light blink. It'll it'll skip if it comes to here. Step uh, input one. It'll it'll uh, skip if input fourteen is open. That's detector. It'll skip down to here. Then test for the start button. If that's not pushed, it'll be open. It'll skip down to here. Uh, test for the uh, repeat switch. If that's open, it'll skip down to here. Execute a half second delay, then go back to input 29 and start all over again. You need at least about a quarter of a second delay minimum. I'm using a half uh, to cycle this thing. If you have no delay statement, I tried it that way, and it, it attempts to cycle at almost infinite speed, and it 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 uh, resets itself. So you got to have a little bit of delay. And, that, and that's our last usable input, uh, realistically, in the mini panel is input 30. And then there's an input uh, 31, and you can put statements in there, but they're, 
some type that it executes automatically upon startup, and that's a little tricky, and I try to avoid that. So realistically speaking, we've got 30 inputs. Uh, each one has four steps, so in theory, you've got 30 times 4, 120 commands to use here, but you can't use them all because you have to have uh, a certain amount of... Uh, a certain amount of input skip just the way the programming works. So realistically, you can write maybe 90 to 100 commands. At the uh, beginning of this video, we showed demos 1 through 4, which were fast-forwarded 500%. Now here, we're showing these same four demos uh, actual speed. We... we we put them at the very end of the movie because they're kind of long. I'm going to push the button to start this system up. What we've got here is, is six Bachman N-gauge street, street cars running on the same main line. We're using an NCE mini panel to control the operation of these cars. And it's all being powered by a NCE power cab, which you can see laying back toward the uh, far right corner. And basically what happens is we run one car at a ta time and we've got two detectors. Uh, and we go past the detector, the mini panel switches the speed down to a lower speed and does a time delay to position uh, each car behind the previous one slightly. Now we've run two cars around from the front detector to the rear detector. And what you see now is the third car starting around. These are Bachman N-Gage DCC Peter Witt street cars and they're running on Cotto Unitrack's track. And we've got no blocks in this system. Uh, the only connections to the track are two power connections. And the two detectors, these are Z stuff detectors, are sitting a, alongside the track. Now there's the third car coming in. Now the fourth car is starting up. And we have switches on the uh, control panel, which I'll hopefully remember to show later. We can control any combination of these cars. Right now we're running all six of them, but we, we can run five of them. We can run four of them, three of them, two of them, one of them. We can run any combination of them uh, using, using uh, switches on the control board, board to uh, control which cars are operated. Occasionally these cars will bump bump one another, uh, bringing them in at a very slow speed. at speed step 12. Right now, the one you see on the main line is running at speed step 18. When they come into the yard, we reduce the speed to speed step 12, and it slows them down to a pretty slow speed. So if, if it bumps the car parked in front of it, it's not a big, it's not a big crash or anything. Now there's the fifth car just came in and stopped. Now the sixth car is starting around the loop. This is kind of a continuation of the previous video, 830, where we had five streetcars on the same track. 
difference here is we've got a longer track. This is a maximum amount of track I could cram onto the table. And we got six cars instead of five cars. And we're using two lower height detectors. That's the DZ 1012s that you see. In the previous video, we had note cards on top of the uh, cars to uh, so the de taller detectors would pick them up. Now that ran a single cycle, uh, and they'll stop and they'll wait till the push button is pushed again. So I'm going to start them up again. Now that ran a single cycle. Uh, and they'll stop and they'll wait till the push button is pushed again. So I'm going to start them up again. This time I'll close the repeat switch, will keep, which will keep them running. This is the repeat switch here. This is an NCE power cab laying here, which is what's controlling the whole operation, or I should say what's powering the whole operation. So I'm going to close this repeat switch, which will keep them running, and push the start button again. Now the whole sequence is starting up all over again. Now that car went past the uh, the block signal, which closed a, a, a relay, which signaled the uh, mini panel, which is our train control device, and it reduced the speed down from from 18 down to 12, and executed a time delay. Now there's a second car coming in. That's got about a, a nine second time delay. The first one had about a ten and a half second time delay. We, we, can't, we can't control distance on these. There's no command to say go past a detector for 48 inches and stop, but we can approximate distance by using time delays because the, the given speed, if you execute a time delay, they're fairly consistent from one time around to the next time around. Now that's car number three coming and it's got a seven second time delay. So hopefully it'll park just behind that yellow car without bumping into it if we're lucky. And hopefully you can see the logic. It's a fairly simple logic. We're just running one car at a time uh, around the loop. I should say about halfway around the loop. And when we run all six cars, then we start the first one up and we run them around to the second detector. So we've always got a detector clear. You've got to have uh, the reason we're using two detectors with this system is because they all end up parked downstream of one detector like you could see they're they're all ending up on the front of the table parked downstream of the the closest detector uh, but when that when that happens the second detector the rear one will be empty there'll be no cars there so we can go around and execute our time delays at the second detector Okay, that's our last car, car number six coming in. Now that's, a, that's about a one second delay. We just have to get it past the detector so it clears the detector. Now we're starting around the uh, loop again with car number one. As I mentioned the previous video, 8.30, we had 
one of these short, one of these low height detectors, the DZ1012. And we had at that time for that video, we had a taller detector, a DZ1011. Uh, both these detectors are, were made for uh, O gauge trains. Uh, but we can, I found by putting the, the shorter detector, which is what you see on the layout now, I found by using those detectors and putting them right down on the tabletop, they'll detect a and then they engage streetcars you see them doing now. Z stuff makes HO detectors and they make N gauge detectors, but those small and they'd be more to scale. But those smaller detectors, the electronics stick down below the the uh, the tabletop, so you have to drill a hole in your layout to mount those. And I'm I'm running on a banquet table. I don't want to drill a hole, so I'm using these larger detectors, which I can just pick them up and move them around. And uh, note if these if this was a larger scale car you could probably use a magnet on the uh, bottom of the car and a reed switch in the track which is always done but these end gauge cars are so tiny I'd, I'd, I'd have problems putting a magnet on the bottom of one of these cars. Probably somebody clever could figure it out a way but I'm not that clever so for these small cars for me it's easier to use the uh, infrared detector so because there doesn't need to be any modification of the uh, train it just it just when the train goes in front of that detector it changes from red to green uh, because the, the infrared signal is blocked and uh, it notifies the detector that the train is there. And I mentioned the uh, power unit laying back there is what they call the NCE power cab. It's made by the NCE company, which is one of the best known uh, manufacturers of DCC equipment uh, right here in the USA in Rochester, New York area. And the thing doing the controlling, which is up on the uh, laying up against the wall back in the far corner, is what they call the NCE mini panel. And that's basically a simple programmable train controller and NCE is the only brand to my knowledge that makes a controller like this so that's one thing to consider when buying an NCE system or when buying a DCC system if you want to do simple automatic train control uh, it, it's good to consider the NCE brand because they do make the mini panel which which is what you see here in operation and they're the, like I said they're the only company as far as I know, that makes this sort of a system. Okay, there's car number five just stopped and parked on the last car. Car number six is running around. You can control these trains with, you know, computer control like a, a train controller. That's a computer software train controller and iTrain is another one, but I, I consider those more complicated. Likewise, you can use an Arduino yeah, but then you got to pick your pick your correct Arduino and then pick a shield for it and put all that together and learn how to use it. And to me, that's more complicated than the mini panel. Okay, we just completed. I think that's the second cycle around. I'm not sure, but they're they're starting another cycle. You could, if you look in uh, historic books uh, where they show streetcars, actual prototype streetcars from, you know, back in the early 20s, you, you often see like at a, a ball game or an amusement park, they'll run, they would run a whole bunch of streetcars out to the event, say a ball game. And if you see a picture in the book of a ball game, you see, you know, maybe a whole bunch of streetcars parked right in a row. And that, that's sort of what you consider this operation could simulate maybe a ball game and the, in this case the ball game is back in the rear and those four cars you see parked back in the rear they're parked at the ball game and then they're leaving one by one to bring people back into town not not a hundred and so not a hundred percent prototypical admittedly but still I think impressive for something that you can do with no blocks in the track and the, no fancy computer systems or anything
And these Bachman street cars, they're pretty much stock. The only change I made, I changed the momentum. I think the momentum comes defaulted to one, and I changed it to two, which gives them a little more, uh, a bit gradual of a startup. And I also changed the uh, the numbers in, in the previous video. I was using the four-digit numbers that the car comes with, but for these this video, I've just renumbered the uh, cars one through six. In other words, the, of the three you see parked in the front, car number one is the front one, the red one. Car number four is the one that's coming in the rear now, just slow and ready to stop. There it stopped. And then uh, cars five and six are the... the two back in the rear. That's car five that just started up. So I just got them numbered car one through six. That's the, 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 the prototypical numbers are so small on end gauge you can barely read them and I've got duplicates anyways. Okay, there's car number five just came in and parked. And if, if you remember back to previous autocontrols.org videos, like uh, 830, 820, excuse me, 828, 827, 826, and 819, and some of the others, they just used a single detector. Uh, and, it, and those systems can be used, but you've got to have a system for clearing the trains out downstream of the detector so that when the next train comes in, the the uh, landing area, so to speak, with the, where they're going to park is, is clear. By using two detectors, we don't, have to, we don't have to move them forward or anything. We can just let them sit there stationary like you see them, then we all run them over to the next detector. So this, this is an easier logic, uh, but it does take a second detector to do this. Okay, there's the, the first car, car number one, coming into the rear. And you may be able to see, I put those blue, uh, the blue sticky tabs about where car number one parks. If you look back there in the rear where car number one, the red one, is parked in front of that bridge, you may be able to see a, a, a blue uh, sliver of paper on the table. That's about where they park. They're, they're reasonably consistent. Uh, from one time around to another. Now that that car just stuttered on the curve back there, but it, it picked up and it's going to go back to its normal operation. Okay, car numbers, car numbers one and two have run around. This is car number three starting up. And what you may notice those uh, the lights on those detectors are green most of the time, and the relay is open. When the uh, car goes in front of the detector and blocks it, like it just did back there, it turns to red briefly, and that that causes the detector to uh, close a, a single pole relay. There's a Z stuff DZ 10,008 relay back on those boards. Uh, right behind the detector that's hooked up to it. So when the car passes in front of the detector and changes the light from green to red, that closes the relay, and that relay is connected to the mini panel to one of its inputs. Uh, and that input signals the mini panel. That's how it knows the car went past the detector. And then it starts executing a time delay. If you never if you've never done any programming, don't work, don't let the word program scare you too much, uh, because this this programming here is almost the simplest kind of programming you can imagine. It's almost elementary school stuff. We send commands, and I'll show you these later when I go over the command file. But we send commands like uh, select uh, 
car 5, that's the one that's running right now, we, did, we would say select car 5 and then speed forward 18. Uh, when it goes in front of a detector, we say speed forward 12 to slow it down. Then we execute a time delay, then we say speed 0. And we actually say speed reverse 0 uh, because that turns the... Uh, the rear light on which it's, when it stops. You can't see the rear light from where we are now, but uh, they've got their rear lights on. Speed forward zero and speed reverse zero have the same effect. They both they both stop the, the loco, but if it's speed reverse zero, it'll turn the reverse lights on if, if the loco is equipped with them. Okay, there's our last car that came in. Now we're starting uh, car six. Uh, excuse me, we're starting car one up. And these two detectors are wired in parallel, by the way. They're both hooked up to, uh, in this case, input 14 on the control on the uh, mini panel. So if either one of those goes to red, it'll close the relay and signal the mini panel. Okay, there's a second car coming in. third car is starting up and they'll just keep repeating this operation uh, all all day long uh, until as long as something doesn't derail or something doesn't stall they'll just keep keep repeating this cycle all along And if one of them gets detained on their way to the uh, next detector, and I'll try to do that here without derailing things, I've got my finger in front of this car, so I'm obviously slowing it down and delaying it. But if I can do this without derailing it, it doesn't it doesn't bother the system or affect anything because the the time delay doesn't start until the uh, car reaches a detector over there. So we're good. It's still on the track. Even though I held that uh, trolley back for about 10 seconds, nothing has nothing disturbed as far as the operation because uh, the time delay starts when the uh, trolley crosses in front of the detector. Then it's doing the time delay. That's about a five and a half second time delay for car four. Now that's car five starting up. If, if a trolley stalls when it's parked and doesn't start up, uh, nothing happens. The, 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 the system is the mini panel, the controller is waiting for it to come around and cross the detector. And if it never gets there, the system will, everything will just sit there and wait till you come along and figure out what's wrong and uh, fix it. Usually it's a piece of dirty track or uh, dirty wheels that cause a car not to start up when it should. I'm going to go over there and open the repeat switch. I just push that repeat switch and the routine is written such that uh, it, 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 after it runs the last car it checks that repeat switch and I'm calling it repeat switch. It's actually input number 18 but it checks that. If that input is open it ends its operation. If it's closed, like it has been, it goes back to the top of the routine and starts running the cars again. So that's how you, you start and stop the system. Uh, if this was like on a public display, those would sit there for, you know, 10 minutes or an hour, however long you wanted them to sit there, and they'll, they'll sit there and wait. And then when somebody comes along and pushes the button again,
when somebody pushes the button again, they'll start up and make another another cycle. And if you if you close the repeat switch before the button is pushed or actually any time any time during the routine, they'll they'll keep repeating cycles, that is to say run continuously. Now I do We've moved the uh, camera and tripod to the other end of the table behind the front detector. Uh, we just wanted to try to show the uh, operation of the tail lights when they stop. Not a not a huge deal, but interesting to see when those cars stop and they're given a speed reverse uh, zero command. The tail light goes on. Hopefully that shows up in the camera, that car sitting there with its light on. And the headlights stay on also. That by, by giving it the speed reverse zero command, uh, when it stops, the tail light will go on. If we gave it a speed forward zero command, it would still be sitting stationary, not moving, but the uh, reverse light wouldn't be on. So the speed reverse command still stops it but it puts that light on when it gets completely stopped in that way whether we're looking at it in the front the front headlight still stays on in that way whether we're looking at the car from the front or the rear we can see there's a light on and that tells us that the car hasn't lost power if we, if we see the light we know it's still in contact with the track There, that, that's car number three. It just came on, and you can hopefully see its reverse light went on. Here's car four coming around. Slows down to speed 12. Remember, it's speed speed uh, 18 on the main line. Now here's car 5 and car 5's got a bad, apparently got a bad tail light because this is the one car out of the six that went at stops and you give it a speed reverse zero command uh, the tail light does not light up so that's apparently a defective car but the other five of them the tail lights work here comes the last car car number six again that's coming in mainline speed 18 when it crosses a detector slows down to speed 12 and stops and there goes its light so you can see hopefully five out of six of those have the lights on and I'm gonna try to move the camera to the other end it's gonna be a little rough here because I gotta pick it up by hand but can get this out we will we'll go down the uh, other side get on the side and you can see hopefully See, they've still got their, uh, they've all got their, all six of them have their, uh, their headlights are lit as well as the, uh, headlights are lit as well as the reverse lights. I mentioned earlier, we can run any combination of these cars. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll pull three of them off. I'll pull the, uh, the red ones off and run just the yellow ones so we'll be running two four and six that's the three yellow ones so what we'll do is we'll pull the three red cars off the track and then we'll go over and open switches one three and five which is the commands for the red cars
So that, that car won three. Here is five. <clears throat> so on this control panel, I'm going to open switch one, I'm going to open switch three, and I'm going to open switch five. And then we'll start this system up by pushing button three, which is our start button. So op by opening switches uh, one, three, and five, it, the, the routine will not execute the commands to start those three cars. It'll just be sending the com commands to start cars two, four, and six, which is the uh, three yellow cars that are left on the track. So there's car number two coming in just as before. Now there's car four starting up. It's executing the same the same routine as before for six cars. It's just skipping over certain certain uh, parts of the routine that run certain cars. It's a very simple, very simple uh, logic. I'll go over the commands later. And that they, they do the same thing as before. They run at speed 18 on the main line and slow down to speed 12 in the yard after they cross in front of the detector. So there's the last car. That's car number 6 that's running right now. Now I've got the uh, repeat switch closed, so as soon as that car number six crosses the detector and the uh, mini panel stops it, which it did, the routine will start executing again. So now the execute the routine is executing again just for three cars. The only the only stipulation is you've got to you've got to keep the cars in their correct order. They can't be they can't be out of order. There's car number one has to in this case car number two has to be in front of car number four and car number four has to be in front of car number six when you start them up. Now what I'll do is before that last car completes its running, I'll go over and open the repeat switch and that will cause them to stop where they are at the front of the layout. I just opened the repeat switch. Now, when that car completes running, uh, it'll be at the bottom of the routine, the end of the routine, so to speak, and it'll check whether the repeat switch is closed. And since it is, isn't is closed, it's open, uh, the routine will stop executing. Now, just as before with six cars, those cars will sit and wait until somebody comes along and pushes a start button, and they'll, they'll start up again. So... Again, if this was like a display layout, you could run any combination of those six cars automatically and have them stop like they're stopped now if you wanted to and wait until somebody, the, the public, it could be pushes the push button. You can wire up a button in parallel with that number three and put it at the front of the table, which I've done in the past, and then the public can push the button to start the trains. We mentioned uh, in a couple of the earlier videos, we were able to control three trains with a single detector. 
and we're going to demonstrate that type of operation here now. Notice the uh, rear detector has been removed from the layout. It's sitting up there on the the, the shelf in front of that uh, Bachman trolley in the middle. You may be able to see the green light up there. So just the front detector is on the layout. And this program is activated by uh, push button 2 normally. Now there, there's no push button 2 on the layout, but we've got a wire connected from input 2 and I can, it's sticking out it, with a bare, a bare end and I can touch that to ground, which is the same effect as using a push button. So I'm going to go over here and grab this wire connected to input 2 and touch it to ground and that will start the routine up. And you can see there's the second, the second detector is over here off the, off the layout now with a picture. And that started up uh, the yellow car. When that program started running it started the yellow car up which is car, car number uh, 2. And car numbers one and three, the red cars are sitting there parked in the yard, so to speak. Now, when that when that uh, yellow car crosses the detector, this program will start uh, car number three, which is up in front. It'll start it running at speed uh, 20, I believe, in this routine. And the middle car, the red car that one will start running at speed 12 so this keeps two cars running at the same time with a, a single detector and you can see the yellow car uh, number two is sitting in the yard area what we're calling the yard downstream of the detector it's sitting there waiting and it'll wait till that uh, first red car comes in and crosses the, de the detector this method was used in previous video 827 to control three trains on the same layout. Uh, in video 827 it had a bunch of options. By, by options I mean I had it rigged so you could use one switch to make the trains pull ahead further and another train, another switch to make them uh, the, the two of them run at the same time or two of them park at the same time. What, what's, what's being demonstrated right now, I took that program from video 827 and cut it down to a bare minimum because there wasn't much space left in the uh, mini panel for additional commands after the, the main program we demonstrated earlier. But you can see what's happening. This keeps two cars in motion all the time and uh, one car is normally parked in the yard while the, while the other two are on the main line. Th this has the advantage and now the repeat switch, it stopped because I had the repeat switch open. It's the same in that respect. Uh, if it's on a public display, it'll run. Uh, if the repeat switch is open, it'll run through one cycle. And then it'll wait until somebody comes along and pushes the button again. And let's do that and start it back up. I'm going to close the repeat switch. And then use our our simulated button two, which is a wire we're going to touch the ground. Now this this program compared to the first one where we were running six cars uh, has the advantage of you don't need the second detector and plus you can keep two cars in motion at any one time. Now the disadvantage is it's more complicated. The program is not quite as straightforward. You don't need to be a computer genius to, to understand this programming, but it's not as simple as the first one we used for six cars. And the second thing is it's not as flexible. The way it's written, it'll only run these three cars. I can't run two cars using this program because it, it only works, it has to have three cars on the track and it's got to have the, the, the three cars that are numbered in the program. Program That is to say it's got to be cars 1, 2, and 3. If you want to substitute a car, you either have to, to uh, renumber a car or change the program. It's usually easier to renumber the locomotive if you need to swap out a locomotive. And the critical thing is the... Uh, the car that's approaching the detector now, which is the red one, 
when that crosses the uh, detector, and you'll see that when it goes to red right now, the mini panel starts executing a time delay of, uh, I think it's about seven or eight seconds. And that seven or eight seconds is used to pull that red car up and stop it. And that has to end before the next car comes in past the detector because if that next car arrives too soon, uh, the mini panel will still be executing that time delay and it will miss the next car coming across the detector. And again, the way this works is the, uh, the, the car that's out on the main line, the yellow one, that's running at speed 20 right now. And the red one that's going back in the rear by the bridges, that's running at uh, speed 12, just at the slower speed to make sure it doesn't catch up to the yellow one. It's got to, it's got to stay back at distance to give the, uh, the one that's crossing the detector time to go past the detector and for the delay statement to finish executing. Now that'll that'll keep uh, that'll keep running until we open the repeat switch again, and you saw that happen happen already. Uh, if I go over there and open the repeat switch, it'll it'll stop those three cars. And again, this is the same program we used in video eight twenty seven, except I just stripped it down because there's not there wasn't much space left in the mini panel after the program for six cars. You've only got thirty inputs and four four steps for each input, which means in theory you can use about 120 commands, that's four times 30, but in practicality it usually ends up around 90 or 100 you can actually write, so you're limited. In earlier video 819 uh, was also similar, it used tra three trains and one detector, and it used a slightly different system, it kept, kept all three trains moving continuously, but it it ran the two in the yard very slow. The, the idea was trying to keep uh, two trains in the yard just running slowly and one train out on the main line. 